Why did I ask you to read on annotated bibliography? It's because, again, this is something that is very important when it comes to doing your research in the future, all right? Or in the next few meetings in your practical research. Because, number one, if you're doing a research paper, you are inevitably going to find and read some other existing research conducted in the past that are related to your own topic. So I hope that by now you are proposing your topics uh, to your research advisor so that you have something in mind or you can imagine like how you can apply this to your topic, right? Now, an annotated bibliography is something that will benefit you in the long run, again, because this can serve as your guide when you are writing your research paper already or when you're writing your concept paper or let's say your proposal because in your proposal you are going to be asked to establish your problem and to present review of related literature related to your topic now the thing is you cannot do that when you don't have references to start with and some students what they do is they just try to write out of out of a blank sheet and then when writing that's the only time that they're gonna google what they uh, can actually put in the writing or like google something that they want to you know place in that particular review of related literature but that is actually a poor practice of writing your review of related literature the best practice is you start with this okay this an annotated bibliography now uh, why because when you have already started with an annotated bibliography it's just a piece of cake for you to write your review of related literature in the future okay now let's know why okay let's find out why this is very useful in writing your research paper in the long run okay so let's dissect first what annotated bibliography means we have two words in here we have annotation or what it means to annotate and then we have a bibliography right so annotation to annotate means to make critical or explanatory notes or comments. So meaning, every time that you're providing critical notes or explanatory notes or comments, you are trying to annotate whatever that something is. So for example, you submitted an essay to a teacher. The teacher writes a comment on the essay saying that this essay is about this topic and it is well written and it's uh, it's actually easy to understand blah blah so those comments that are written on the paper are what we call annotations and whenever some a teacher does that he or she is doing annotation so remember that again to annotate would just be to provide these notes or comments on something now where do we provide it in a bibliography right so what is a bibliography a bibliography is as simple as the list of sources or references one has used for researching a topic so again we go back to the idea that you are going to have a topic in mind that you will research on and once you have a topic you will be surveying the existing body of literature or the existing scholarship that's written on that topic already okay so ano na yung mga research that have been conducted under that particular topic okay so kung may mga nakuha ka the mga research articles about them and then you cite them in your research paper or in your essay for example then you used these as sources or references tama? and then when you cite them in your text you will have a separate section of your paper that's called bibliography which will list all those those sources or references Okay, so don't get me wrong, the references could be anything. It could be a mixture of your research articles, of books, of news articles, of encyclopedia entries, or even videos that are very credible, right? So YouTube videos nowadays are being used as reference given that they are all also credible, right? Wag lang basta yung mga random YouTube videos na maraming propaganda, okay? Yung mga conspiracy theories lang ang pinapa present but there are actually credible verified accounts that could actually be useful now the thing is in the context of your research paper most of the time you're gonna be using research articles because again this is a research paper therefore you want to survey what has existed prior to your research so ang mga hahanapin mo ay mga research article 
Okay, now, ganito yung itsura ng bibliography, right? So, ito siya. Kapag nakakita kayo ng ganyan, uh, like a separate section in a textbook or in a news or in a journal article, in a website article, diba? Nakakakita tayo ng ganito. This is what we call a bibliography or sometimes we call it references pages or sometimes we call it works cited. Pare-pareho lang yung mga yan. Ang ibig lang niyang sabihin, these are the list of things or references that you used in your writing. So whatever writing that is, may that be a very simple essay or uh, the very complex research paper. So kung ano man yung mga sinite mo doon, kailangan meron silang ganito. Because in text, ang gagamitin mo lang naman doon ay according to surname plus the publication date. Tama ba? Yun lang ang gagamitin mo. Now, uh, once you do the bibliography, that's the time that you're going to write all the details about that reference. So given nga na ganyan ang itsura ng bibliography, if we put them together, annotation plus bibliography, ano na ngayon ang ginagawa ng annotated bibliography, right? So an annotated bibliography provides critical notes on each of the sources in terms of relatedness and relevance to your topic. So, ibig sabihin, kung ang bibliography is a list of sources or references, ang annotated bibliography may additional siyang paragraphs under each of the source. So, instead na ganyan lang siya, di ba? Instead na ganyan lang siya, ang annotated bibliography, may paragraph siya under each of these references. Para saan yung mga paragraph? Kasi nga, magpo-provide tayo ng critical notes on each of the source. So again, kasi nga, you're gonna be finding out sources, di ba? Magbabasa kayo ng mga research papers. So, ang mangyayari, yung annotated bibliography, while you're reading your sources, nag annotate na kayo. Ibig sabihin, nagsusulat na kayo about dun sa mga binabasa nyo para hindi na sila babasahin ulit. Alright? May basis na kayo for uh, review of related lit kasi nakapagsulat na kayo about it. So, let's talk about how you really will write it. Pag sinabi natin critical notes, we have three parts. Okay? May three parts tayo dyan. Some of the annotations would not write all three parts. But for the sake of beginners, you are going to write all three parts. Kasi mas magagamit nyo yan when you write your research paper na. Okay? So, what are the critical notes that we provide, again, in an annotated bibliography? We provide a summary. Okay? We provide an analysis. And we provide application. Now, let's have them one by one. When you summarize a research paper, okay, kunwari, meron na kayong nakita, meron na kayong topic, tapos ginugal nyo yung topic nyo, nakakita kayo ng isang research paper, binasa nyo. Right? Now, out of that, you're gonna be creating a summary. When you summarize, you just present information that you have learned about a source. So you don't have to add anything. You don't have to input your own observations. Walang ganon. Ang gagawin nyo lang is to really present what has transpired in that research. Anong nangyari sa research na yon about, ano, about saan siya? Anong methods ang ginamit? Anong, anong results at anong generalizations ng authors? Okay? So basically, you're just reporting the facts of the research paper. Wala kayong babaguhin kung ano yung sinabi sa papel, that's what you summarize. So this is just, you you get the major points, you answer the major questions that I asked earlier, kung about saan siya, ano yung method niya, blah, 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 and then ano yung findings niya, at yun, meron ka ng isang summary. Remember that when we are summarizing, diba? since time immemorial, we have been taught that when we summarize, we're trying to shorten a very long stretch of writing, tama? Or of reading material. So, if we try to shorten it, we reduce its size, we, we try to like make it more concise, but the thing is, we have to make sure that all the information, the necessary information, and the important details are covered by the summary. Kung baga, kapag may nagbasa nung summary nyo about a research article, kailangan malalaman nila about saan yun. Na hindi na sila umuulit magbasa ng buong article. So, alimbawa ako, binasa ko yung summary nyo ng research articles. Kailangan alam ko kung about saan na siya without me reading your original source. Doon pa lang sa summary nyo, kailangan mapapresent nyo na sa akin about saan yung research paper na yun. Okay? So, that's what the summary is. Now, the subjective part, okay, the subjective part, when I say subjective, yung base sa mga opinion nyo, or mga observation nyo, or inferences ninyo, gaganap siya sa analysis. Because in the analysis, this is the time that we ourselves assess the paper. So, dito na tayo quite magiging judgmental. Kasi we're trying to uh, assess the paper, the research paper that we read. 
In what way do we do that? We highlight the merit of a particular source. Ano ibig sabihin natin ng merit? Yung worth niya as a source. Okay? Useful ba siya? Beneficial ba siya sa field? Right? Sa tingin mo ba, um, strong yung paper in a sense that it answered its research questions? Or tingin mo ba, it's kind of a limited paper kasi hindi niya naman na-address yung mga research questions na gusto niyang, na gusto niyang pag-aralan? Or feeling mo ba yung methodology niya ay maganda ang pagkakagawa? Or feeling mo nagulang siya at yung methods niya hindi accurate sa research design? Right? So yung mga ganong tipo ng tanong, you're trying to hint at the strengths and weaknesses of the paper to provide its merit or yung worth niya as a research paper article at isang source na gagamitin mo sa paper mo, that's when you are analyzing. Remember, okay? So, analyzing uh, or assessing the paper. Now, after you have analyzed the paper, let's say you've already spotted the uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the paper, it's now time for you to reflect on them. So, mag-reflect ka na ngayon, right? You reflect on the relatedness and relevance of a source to your own research. So, ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyo that this will serve as a guide. Kasi hindi kayo nag annotate for me or for your practice teacher. nag annotate kayo for yourselves because you're going to get something from here, okay, to your own research. So, ang ginagawa natin pag nag application tayo is that we're trying to reflect on the relevance and relatedness of that certain reference to our own. Kasi, di ba, meron na tayong topic in mind. Let's say, we have already approved the topic, di ba? So, if your practical research teacher has already approved the topic, then that's the time that you think about, like, or that that's the time that you search for related articles, di ba? Kasi approved na yung topic niya, so magre-research na kayo niya ng mga related articles. Now, pag may nakuha na kayo, pa ang tanong dyan ay paano mo magagamit yung article na na-research mo to your own research. Kasi kaya ka naman nagre-research is for you to have basis, Right? For you to have a basis, for you to have a framework, or probably for you to have like a, a something to peg, di ba? Yung peg mo, kung anong gagawin mo sa research mo. Umuha ka ng idea, inspiration, ganyan. So, in the application part, you can apply those things that you found strong to your research paper. So, let's say in the analysis part, nakita mo that the method is really good and it fits well the topic in your head. So therefore, you can say in the application of the annotation part that you can apply the method that you found strong to your own research. So sasabihin mo sa annotation mo ngayon, uh, this research paper uh, would be used as a basis for my own research's method. Pwede yun. So nag-apply ka na. In-apply mo na kung ano yung magandang nakita mo doon sa research article na yon, Or pwedeng not necessarily the method, but some stuff that you find useful. For example, maganda yung model na ginamit niya, maganda yung theoretical framework na ginamit, or may mga nakita kang useful na definitions ng variables na gagamitin mo sa study mo. Diba? So, pwede mo rin kunin yun. And all you have to do is to take note of that in the annotation. Sabihin mo lahat sa annotated part ng, uh, ng application kung ano yung mga magagamit mo or ma-apply mo doon sa research mo. Now, miss, does it mean that um, everything beautiful is going to be applied? Hindi rin naman. Depende rin sa'yo. Okay? Hindi naman lahat ng maganda kukunin mo. Pwede yung salain mo lang. Right? Kung ano yung pinaka-accurate at kung ano yung mga, ang feel mo. Kasi call mo yan as, your, as, the, as the researcher. Ikaw ang author eh. Right? Now, miss, pwede ba na-apply yung mga limitations? Kasi ba diba, of course, kapag may strengths, may limitations. Kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina. Now, the thing is, yes, ma-apply nyo pa rin yung limitation. In what way? Kasi if there's limitation, therefore, there is a gap in literature. May gap. Kung baga, may kulang. May, may nawawala. So, if you think that that study is very limited, what you can excuse me what you can do is that you yourself are the are the one going to fill it the, to fill the gap okay if you fill mo ngayon yung gap doon kung may kulang de ikaw yung magpuno okay kung may hindi na address na aspeto or hindi na address na research question i-address mo yung research question na yun gawa ka ng research to fill that gap Okay, kasi at the end of the day, the reason why we're doing research is because we want to contribute to the body of literature that is already existing 
Okay, we want to provide something to the academe. We want to offer something based on a systematic, uh, you know, inquiry or systematic approach to studying these kinds of phenomena. For example, so pwedeng pwede mong sabihin sa application part or sa reflection reflection part na since the study let's say is limited in terms of sample size kasi sobrang liit ng sample size or sobrang konting tao yung in interview okay meaning the the results are not that generalizable kasi nga sobrang konti eh so sobrang konti noon ma-generalize mo ba yung buong population masasabi mo ba na representative itong konting tao na to sa lahat ng population let's say ng buong Pilipinas of course not so pag ganun, um nakita mo na may limitation in the sample size in your research pwede kang mag-adjust sabihin mo that the existing researchers have had conducted this study but only among few samples so sa research mo you're gonna conduct it in a larger sample size or given more uh, people or participants in the study now, these are the guide questions that I'm going to give you for you to be able to um, do a, an accurate summary analysis and application. Kasi mahirap nga naman. Kahit anong sabi ko sa inyo kung anong summary analysis sa application, medyo mahirap pa rin siyang gawin kung first time nyo. Right? So, magbibigay ko sa inyo ng mga sample questions. And then, these sample questions, pag sinagot nyo sa, magkakakam up na kayo with a summary, with an analysis, and with an application. Okay? Let's start. So, sa summary, ito yung mga pwede nyo itanong sa sarili nyo. You can ask, what is the topic of the source? What the, what actions did the author perform with the, with the study? And why? So, yung mga procedure, right? What were the methods of the author? So, yung methods, mag, uh, magdedepende yan kung anong design, right? Is it qualitative? Is it quantitative? Or whatever. Kasi, uh, you, you, need to, you need to get the procedures depending on the methods that said and design them. So, what was the theoretical basis? Hindi naman kayo mag-iisip niyan eh. Kasi, explicit yan. Nakalagay yan dun sa research paper na mahahanap nyo. Okay? So, kapag naganap kayo ng isang research article, meron yang label. Theoretical framework, conceptual framework, meron yan. So, hindi naman kayo masyadong duduguin dyan. Okay? A-understand nyo lang siya. And then, i-report nyo siya. So, what was the theoretical basis? What were the conclusions of the study? So, isama nyo rin yun. Findings, conclusions, ano yung mga generalizations niya. Now, when you answer all these questions, nakabuo na kayo niyan ng isang summary. Okay? Nakakabuo na kayo niyan ng isang paragraph that summarizes the entire research article. Ganun lang siya kasimple. So, if you have guide questions like this, try to answer this and try to come up with a with a unified paragraph or with with a paragraph that answers all these questions. Yun na yung summary niya. Okay? Let's have uh, an example like this. Okay? Ako na lang ang magbabasa since ang uh, konti natin at medyo nagmamadali ako because I don't wanna over time. Okay, dito may kita nyo yung citation, right? Ang, ang author natin si Gathman at si Nessa na published to noong 1997 at ang title niya is Follow Stages of Faith Development in an Honors in Science and Religion Seminar. At ito na naman yung kanyang journal. Volume number, issue number, you have your page numbers, and you have your URL. So again, I'm gonna be providing you with the link kung saan nyo may kita kung paano nyo i-format yung inyong citation. Okay? Kung itong APA citation na ito. Right? And then, again, sinabi natin that this is not just a list of references. Rather, may annotation tayo. So ito na nga, ganito na yung itsura niya. Uh, you're gonna have a paragraph like this under each of the citation. So, ito, itong site na to, itong article na to, ito yung summary niya. Okay? So, just very quickly, ah. The authors described the construction and rationale of an honors course in science and religion that was pedagogically based on Lawson's learning cycle model. In Lawson's model, the students writes a short paper on a subject before a presentation of the material and then writes a longer paper re-evaluating and supporting his or her views. Using content analysis, the authors compared the answers in the first and second essays, evaluating them based on fouler stages of development. Example, student writes are presented with the author's analysis of faith stage exhibited by the students which demonstrated development in stages 2 through 5. 
Siyempre, so kung nakikita nyo dito, this is just a summary of the article. Walang opinion dyan, walang subjective thought dyan, walang observation dyan. It's just a matter of answering what is it about, what is the model used, ito, tong Lawson Learning Cycle Model, what are the procedures, ayan, pinasulat daw sila ng essay, pinare-evaluate yung views, pinasulat ng another essay, and then, as for the analysis of data, nag-content analysis sila. Tapos, binasihan nila yung Fowler Stages of Faith Development. Kung nasaan doon yung mga sudyante, kung stage 2 ka ba, stage 3, 4, or 5. Kasi, of course, kung stage 5 ka, mas mataas yung level mo. Nasa mataas na level ka na ng development. Alright? So, I hope that you found this uh, summary useful. So, ganun siya. Kapag halimbawa, nagbasa tayo, alam na natin agad kung ano yung ginawa, pinagagawa doon sa research paper na yun. Alright? And alam na natin mga ginamit, alam na natin procedures, alam na natin ang generalizations. Although, this summary actually is kind of lacking kasi wala siyang, wala siyang findings eh. So, I want you to include findings, results findings, and even the generalizations in your summary. Kasi, it will help you a lot din eh. When you're already uh, have, when you're already reviewing yung inyong mga related literature, kasi kailangan yun. Titignan nyo kung ano yung mga findings at mga conclusion ng iba-ibang essay. So, uh, before you even do that, your review of related literature, meron na kayong mga ganitong analysis. So, basically, you're just going to get from your annotation. Tapos, pag samasamahin nyo, gawin yung cohesive yung transitions, yung flow ng ideas, dapat okay. Pero it's just a matter of structuring. Ang mahalaga, content-wise, you already have several references to review in your introduction sa inyong papel. Okay? Next tayo, in the analysis part or in the assessment part, these are the things that you can ask. Okay? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the article? So I've already said this earlier, that this is the main question you ask when you are assessing or analyzing the paper, right? You are trying to ask the weaknesses and the strengths of that particular article. So, in terms of what? So, may strength ba? May mas maganda ba yung anong maganda about sa methodology or anong limitation about sa methodology meron ba? In terms of language choices, di ba? We've been talking about fish. So, in terms of formality and personality, na-apply ba siya doon sa language choices? In terms of structuring, specificity, na-apply ba siya doon? Organization, again, flow of ideas. Magadali bang sundan yung research paper or feeling mo problematic yung kanyang pagkakagawa. Alright? Level of detail. Kompleto ba yung details or may kulang ba? May, may missing information ba? Is the article scholarly or generalizable? Ibig sabihin, na-apply ba natin yung kanyang results or conclusions sa lahat ng konteksto? Kasi pag sinabi natin generalizable, ibig sabihin, you can make the same generalization in a different context. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, here's an example. The authors made no mention of how to support spiritual development in the course. They were interested in the interface between religion and science, teaching material on ways of knowing, creation myths, evolutionary theory, and ethics. They exposed students to Fowler's ideas, but did not relate the faith development theory to student work in the classroom. These appears to have no effort Sorry, there appears to have no effort to modify the course content based on the predominant stage of development. And it is probably a, a credit to their teaching that they were able to conduct such a course with such diversity in student faith development. However, since Fowler's work is based largely within a Western Christian setting, some attention to differences in faith among class members would have been a useful addition to the study. There was no correlation between grades and level of faith development. So, uh, by now, I hope that it it's kind of obvious na yung mga uh, phrases in bold, itong mga toy, yan, uh, I hope that it's uh, you get the signal na ito yung mga limitations. Kasi, di ba, nakita niya naman, may no, may did not, may no effort. So, weaknesses talaga siya. Okay? Weaknesses talaga siya. Tapos, uh, I hope also that you got the signal na yung mga ito, yung mga naka-italicized, these are naman mga strengths. So, ganito po gagawin ang analysis. You will be providing kung saan sila nagkulang or kung ano yung mga limitations nila and you will also be providing kung ano yung mga strengths ng mga papers. In this case, kuha lang tayo ng ibang samples ha, para hindi tayo mag-overtime. Halimbawa, ito. The author made no mention of how to support spiritual development in the course. So, ang ibig sabihin dito, hindi naman nag, nagpaliwanag yung author, hindi niya binanggit 
kung paano ba sinusuportahan yung spiritual development in the course. Kasi remember, this is about faith development. Diba? Nakita nyo sa title kanina. It's about faith development. So, there's no mention of spiritual development in the course, how to support it. So, it's a limitation. Bakit? Kasi yun yung isa sa mga variable mo eh, yung faith development eh. However, hindi mo na hindi mo na explain kung paano ba nasusuportahan sa classroom yung spiritual development. So it's a it's a butas, kumbaga it's a loophole. Merong butas yung research paper na hindi na address. Okay? Another one, ito, medyo yan, sabi dito, uh, they did not relate faith development theory to student work. Okay, bakit siya naging limitation? Kasi remember, again, yung variable mo, yung procedure niya kasi ay nagpasulat lang ng essay. Tapos, out of the essay, imemeasure nila yung faith development stage. Now, hindi man lang inexplain kung ano yung relationship ng faith development sa student work. Kasi student work ang essay eh. Now, had they explained it, it would have been a strength. Kaya lang hindi na-explain. Kaya, medyo limited tayo pagdating doon. Dapat, ini-establish mo yung relationship ng variables mo. Okay? Kasi yun yung tinitignan mo eh. So, bakit ka nag- bakit ka nag- uh, i-investiga or bakit ka nag-aaral or ba't mo pinag-aaralan yung sample essays ng mga bata? How does that relate to faith theory? ba diba? So, medyo malabo. Kaya, kailangan in the essay, it is explicitly explained. Pero kagaya nito, sa analysis, di kasi siya na-explained. So, pwede nyong i-point out something like that. So, in your own, limbawa, nakahanap na nga kayo ng article, you can do this as well. You point out ano yung mga variables na hindi na-relate, ano yung mga kulang na explanation, ano sa tingin nyo yung mga dapat pang i-mention ng author na hindi na-mention. Okay? Especially if these are the major variables in your essay, you really have to establish Okay, why you're looking at these variables. Okay, let's take a look at the strengths naman. May strength din naman yung, yung paper, kahit pa paano. Halimbawa, ito, sabi dito, it is probably a credit to, the, to their teaching that they were able to conduct such a course with such diversity in student faith development. So, ibig sabihin tayo, halimbawa, sa isang class, iba-iba kayo ng faith development stage, iba-iba kayo ng faith in the first place or religions in the first place, pero nagawa pa rin itong uh, study na to. Kung baga, as uh, strong siya in a way na the study is inclusive so walang kinikilalang relihiyon lahat ay tanggap lahat ay nasasako di ba hindi din discriminate yung mga taong may ibang faith pero lahat ng mga estudyante ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon na ma- na makasali dito sa study na to or sa research na to so mga they're not discriminatory of faith or of any faith they're not they're inclusive and yun nga, um, they, they respect diversity or individual differences. Parang ganun. So, yun yung man yung isang strength. Okay? So, ilan lang yun. May iba pa. Pero, again, sample lang naman. So, in your in your own, ganun yung mga pwede nyong spot. Or pwede rin, again, kung, kung nakita nyo maganda yung methods, pwede nyong sabihin dito na yung method ay ganyan, maganda, pagkakagawa, or na-address talaga yung research questions, or uh, that is the best way to really address the research question, etc. etc. Okay? Now, let's proceed to the questions you can ask yourself in the application part or in the reflection part. Ito na yung magre-reflect kayo. Actually, if you were to ask me, the very question that you have to ask yourself is, how do I apply this to my own research? Yun lang yun eh. Okay? Paano ko ma-apply itong research na binasa ko sa sarili kong research? Okay? Then, these are sub-questions. Pwede mong tanongin, does this article fill a gap in literature? Yan yung sinasabi ko. Kung meron ba siyang na-address na gap? Okay? Kung may limitation in the past, tapos na-address niya yun. Kung wala, ikaw ang magpuno. Okay? So, sa application mo, sasabihin mo na may gap na ganito, and then your research tries to fill that gap in literature. Okay? How would you be able to apply this method to your area of focus? Yung area of focus nyo, of course, TVL, uh, cookery. So, kung ganyan ang, ang area of focus nyo at na-approve na yung topic of choice nyo under that area, pwede nyo na kayong maghanap ng mga article that could be related to that area of focus. At tignan nyo if the methods could apply to your own kung pwede nyo siyang gamitin. Actually, di naman masamang gumaya ng research. Ang tawag nga natin doon ay replication. Kung gusto mong gayaan yung study niya, paano niya ginawa, you replicate that study. 
Actually, that's very welcome in terms of research. Okay? Pwede kayong mag-replicate ng study. So, if you find that the, method, that the method is applicable to your area of focus, then why not replicate it? So, isulat mo dun sa application mo, sa annotation mo, na this research could be used or the method of this research could be applied to my own research o kaya sabihin mo na i-replicate mo yung procedure ng author na to doon sa sarili mong research. Pwede mong gawin yon sa annotation. Again, ang AC Nyo, yung annotation ay guide ninyo. So in the long run, if you if you wrote something like that and you go back to your annotation, you know where to get something. Okay? Since ang annotation mo dito, gagamitin mo yung method, so babalik ka dun sa research na yon at alam mo kung sino siyang research okay? or, or ano siyang research kasi may annotation ka na eh. Right? Or uh, you can ask yourself, is this article universal? Again, pag sinabi natin universal na nag apply ba siya sa lahat or yung, yung phenomena ba na yon ay okay lang din is sa ibang konteksto or maiiba ba siya kapag ka ginawa mo sa ibang konteksto. Right? So you could actually do such things. Okay? Um, let's take a look at this example. Fowler's work would seem to lend itself to research of the sort, but this model is the only example found in recent literature. Okay? Doon pa lang sinabi niya na, na ito, pwede yan. Yung Fowler's work ay talagang nagagamit natin in terms of research. So, that's one application. Kung gusto mo rin gamitin yung Fowler's application, why not? Sabi mo, okay lang siyang gamitin sa research. Okay? Now, this study demonstrates the best use of the model, which is assessment. While the theory claimed high predictability, the change process chronicled is so slow and idiosyncratic that it would be difficult to design and implement research that had its goal measurement, blah, blah, blah. So, dito kayo tumingin, no? It would be difficult daw, sinabi niya sa application. So, anong feeling yung gagawin niya dyan sa research na yan? Ang gagawin niya dyan, hindi niya yan gagamitin. So, sa annotation niya, sinabi niya na magiging mahirap para sa sarili niyang research na i-design or i-implement or gawen yung ganong klaseng methodology. Magiging mahirap. So, nilagay niya na agad sa annotation niya na mahirap yung gawen so hindi ko siya gagawin. Pero, pwede kong gamitin yung kanyang model. Ito nga, yung Fowler's work. Pwede kong gamitin yung model niya for the assessment. So, ito, ang ginagawa na ng annotation na to is binibridge niya yung article na binasa to her or his own research work. Okay, so paano mo nagagamitan yung mga nabasa mo dun sa yung research work? In this case, sabi niya, pwede niyang magamit yung model, pero hindi niya i-implement yung mismong procedure kasi nga, mahirap siya eh. May ilis siyang i-design or i-implement at masyado siyang mabagal. Okay, mabagal yung proseso eh. Let's say, ngayon, you only have one quarter to finish it. So, gagaw gagamitin niyo pa ba yung mabagal na process? Of course not. Pwede niyo ilagay sa ano yun? Sa annotation, na due to limitation or time constraints, uh, we will not use this this research paper's procedure kasi it will take so much time, blah, blah, blah. It's up to you. Tandaan nyo, ginagayad nyo yung sarili nyo. Okay? So, nagsusulat kayo not for the teacher, but for you to be guided when you are writing your research paper already. Okay? Ganun siya. So, anong itsura niya pag pinagsama-sama natin yung tatlong parts? Ganito yung buong annotation niya. Okay? So again, this is the same this is the same citation, yan pa rin 'yon. Ito pa rin yung binasa nating summary, ito pa rin yung binasa nating analysis and this is what we read as the reflection. So merong three parts yan represented by the three paragraphs and ganito yung itsura ng buong annotated bibliography ng research na to. May tanong ba? May tanong po? Sige, balik ta rin natin. Taas kamay ng mga walang tanong. 